Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala al mabruthi rahmatan lil alameen, nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yomiddini wa ba'd. We always praise the Almighty, the Creator, the Maker, Nourisher, Cherisher, Sustainer, Provider, Protector, Curer, the one who has made us, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of our existence. We thank Him for everything He has given us. We anticipate from Him that He would grant us paradise. Amin. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings and salutations upon all the messengers that He has sent to us from the very beginning, the time of Adam. May peace be upon Him. All the way down, including Moses and Aaron and Jesus and Abraham. May peace be upon them all and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the final messenger who came with a completion of what the others had actually brought. And we ask the Almighty to bless all the companions of these messengers and to bless every single one of us and to bless our offspring to come up to the last day. Amin. My brothers and sisters, it is a great pleasure and an honor to be here in this beautiful stadium in Singapore. And that being said, I am in front of you as a brother, as a son, and as a father as well. And this evening we will be speaking on aspects of parenting but drawing from the surah number 31 in the Quran where the Prophet or should I say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given verses that have been eternalized in the Quran in which there is mention made of a certain man for a specific reason and that is what we will be drawing from this evening. Who was this man? His name was Luqman the wise. Where was he from? He was from the northern part of Africa. What we would term today Sudan. We would call Sudan. According to the narrations, he was a man from Africa. Some narrations say that he was actually a slave, but he was very wise. So he was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was not one of the prophets, but he was such a wise man. His preachings and teachings to his own son were so powerful that the Almighty chose to make mention of them in his word. And that is the revelation known as the Quran. And we who are Muslimin recite this as an act of worship. If you were to start your prayer, one of the five daily prayers, and you were to read Surah Al-Fatiha, and thereafter you were to read a portion of this particular advice of Luqman to his son, it would suffice as your prayer. That's how powerful these words are. So they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he describes what Luqman has said, the wise, Al-Hakim. So what did he say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named the entire surah after this man, Luqman. I want to pause there for a moment. Many of us will never be known. A lot of us, perhaps after we die, a few years down, nobody will know us. I think if I were to ask you, and I've said this before, how many of you can name people who lived in your community 200 years back? You probably will not be able to come up with many names, if even one. So the bulk of us, perhaps a hundred years from now, two hundred years from now, nobody will know we existed. But those who promote goodness and teach good and would like to light the candles of others in a way that is so beautiful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our maker, will ensure that a good remembrance remains for them even later on. And this is why when it comes to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ We have left a good reputation for him. May peace be upon Abraham. Why a good reputation? He stood for goodness. He stood for reaching out to everyone in a good way. The same applies to Moses and Aaron. May peace be upon them. Musa and Harun alayhim as -salam. Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِمَا فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَى مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ 
We have left a beautiful reputation for them, a good remembrance amongst those who came after them for them. And peace be upon Moses and Aaron, Musa and Harun. May peace be upon them and may peace be upon every single one of us. This is a powerful encouragement for myself and yourselves to touch the lives of, the, of as many people as possible in a beautiful way so that when people think of you after you've left this world which is so temporary they will at least say may Allah bless his soul Allahu Akbar may Allah bless the man we miss him he did a lot of good in his life whereas you know that some of us lead our lives in such a way that our daughters-in-law are waiting for us to die may Allah protect us I hope that's not the case I don't think it is in Singapore anyway mashallah so some of us are leading our lives in such a way that people who work with us say, I hope this person is sick today, they don't come to work. That's how it is. Rather, when they see us, they should smile. Mashallah. When this person corrects me, they do it in such a beautiful way. I really feel honored to be corrected by such a person. They say, I feel honored to be working with you because you have empowered them in a beautiful way. We, we rid ourselves of jealousy and hatred and all these evil qualities that make us become nasty towards one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah purify us. I mean, so this man was, according to his community, perhaps not as significant as in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies amongst us. There will be those who are so significant in the eyes of their maker, yet people in society may not even recognize them as significant. That is because your link with your maker will show very easily when it comes to your link with the others. So if you have a good link with those around you and you've reached out to them in a beautiful way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ensure that you have goodness in this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create ease for every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, let's look at this man. We've already made mention of how important he was. Yet, in the eyes of people he may not have been. He tells his son, pieces of goodness. He reaches out to the one whom he knew. I can reach out to this person. Now, even before we get to that, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Indeed, we have bestowed upon Luqman, the wise, we have bestowed upon him the wisdom, saying, be thankful to the Almighty. When the Almighty has granted you education and wisdom and goodness, be thankful to him by reaching others with that goodness that you have been granted. Don't be selfish. So much so, we are taught as Muslims that if you are to supplicate, you want to call out to the Almighty for your own needs, Remember those who have needs as well. Call out for them. Don't just say, Oh Allah, give me, give me, give me. But you'd rather also say, Oh Allah, give those who don't have too. Wow, what a teaching. We are taught that when you make a prayer for someone else, the angels are saying, Oh Allah, give him or her similar to what he or she is asking for the other. So if I were to say, Almighty, grant him a mountain full of gold. I hope I'm sincere in that. So the angels would say, oh, and grant him too. So I have a mountain of gold and someone else has it too. Whereas if I were to say, give me a mountain of gold, I may have it, but I did not reach out to others with it. It will become something that might be a means of my destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. You know, imagine if you were told that whatever you ask for, your enemy will get double that. Have you ever heard that? So it is said that once... You know, one of these people came and said, right, you will be given what you want. But whatever you want, we're going to give your neighbor double. So the man was witty. He says, okay, give me a huge house, massive palace with a pool and a tennis court and whatever else he wished for. And it came and it was given to him. And the man next door got two. Oh, he looked at it and said, ah. And then he says, okay, give me so much of wealth and so much of money that I can live for however long and so whatever, whatever he asked for in terms of wealth. And he was given that mountain of gold and his neighbor got two mountains of gold. And he says, Ugh. so finally he says, and this shows how bad the heart is sometimes. He says, now I want you to scare me half to death. Wow. <laughs> you know what happened? That would mean scare my neighbor to death. Go on. 
I was scared half and you can scare him all the way. If that is the attitude, we are not good people, really. You wish for your brother what you wish for yourself in terms of goodness. And we want to reach out to people like Luqman did. Look, he tells his son. And Allah says there that we asked him to be grateful to us. He was so grateful that he reached out to his son in the best way he could, in the most polite way that he could. And he reached out in such a beautiful way that these teachings have come to us. So Allah says... Whoever is thankful, is thankful for himself. And whoever is ungrateful, they need to know the Almighty who gave you whatever you have, does not really need you. He is independent from you. So if I don't want to worship my maker, for example, and I know he's given me my health, my eyes, if I were to ask you who gave you your life, you say someone, the giver of life. Well, if I am ungrateful to him, he keeps on giving life and he will keep on. And my little insignificant self would probably not even be of importance to him if I were a person who really did not want to have a link with him, whereas still out of his mercy, he has a link with you. You know, those who turn away, those who want to run away in disobedience of the maker, he still loves them. He still provides for them. He still gives them so much so that when the prophet Abraham said, Oh Allah, grant all those of my offspring goodness who believe. Allah says, we will even give those who disbelieve. We will give them. Why not? We will give all of them. Even those who disbelieve, Allah says, we will give them up to a time. We continue giving them. So this is why you find it does not mean that because you're a believer, you will be wealthy or because you're a disbeliever, you will be poor. No, sometimes the disbelievers might be richer and even more in terms of authority and so on than the believers. But that is a test of the same maker. And there will come a time when they realize that if the Almighty wills, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create is for us all. So Luqman addresses his son saying, and Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ And remember when Luqman the wise told his son, لِبْنِهِ Al-Ibn means the son. He didn't say, Yabni. Oh my son, but he said, Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son, oh my dear son, my beloved son. Pause there for a moment. It shows he has a link with his child. How many of us have a link with our children? How many of us are able to even address our teenage kids? To be honest with you, a lot of us are busy at work, so much so that the kids don't even know us and we don't really know them. We don't even know what goes on in their lives. We don't even have time for them. We haven't made the time. Even the weekend comes and we're busy doing something else. You know, fishing, fishing. You go out, and then you catch the fish. And what happens? Hours have passed. Even if you just took your children fishing, perhaps you would be able to do something. No, they disturb me. I don't like that. Okay, well, why did you have them in the first place? So if you want to have children, make sure that you make time for them. Allahu Akbar. If you want to have children, make sure that you make time for them. I know we are all busy leading our lives, but create space. Change a little bit here and there. Make time and be beautiful with them. Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son. Wow, how I talk to you. I love you so much. Many of us have not told our children how much we love them. I know maybe the older generation might feel, hey, how can I tell my daughter I love you? Do you think I'm uh, insane? Are you crazy? Do you know what you mean? How can you not say I love you? Go out and tell her I love you. So what? It's a different type of love altogether. But you have to, if you don't express it, there will be someone else expressing it, then it will be too late. And they might lead them to doom. So this is why, have a beautiful link, express your feelings to your children and tell them how much you care for them, even to your spouse. We have so many emails of females that come in, you know, they call it email because I think most of them come from females. So. <laughs> So many emails coming from females complaining that, you know, my husband never tells me he loves me. He, I know he does, but he doesn't say it. But I, I'm, I, I'm sure he does. So we have to say, no, you know, uh, I'm, you know, some people express it differently and so on. But, you know, to be honest with you, come on, guys. You need to say that you love her. You need to say it. Not just because, you know, you're scared of her because now she's looking big and, you know, she looks at you. Do you love me? Say, I love you. I do. No. 
it is really something you need to think about. You need to express your feelings because today's world, not only should you show it physically and through your actions, you need both the statement and the action that proves it, not just one. So if you just have an action that proves it but no statement, you will lose out. And if you have a statement but no action that proves it, then too you lose out. Wow. So this is why, look at Luqman, he addresses his son saying, Oh, my beloved son. So now the son is all ears. I want to listen to my dad. If, if my father did not have time for me and he did not address me with respect, I wouldn't ever have sat and listened to him. But because I know he cares for me, let me lend him an ear. So what is he saying? Did he say, Oh, my beloved son, serve me. I'm your father. Did he say that? No. Listen to how wise he is and the words he chooses and how selective he is with the language. He says, oh my beloved son, do not associate partners with the one who made you. Develop a powerful link with he who made you. Your maker, you're going to return to him. You would be at a loss if you thought life was only 70 years of enjoyment to become the biggest doctor and PhD holder and to be able to lead and to be able to become the CEO of the company and then 70 years down you die and the baton is passed on to someone else in the world. Nobody is even bothered what is happening to you in your grave at that time for eternity. No one is bothered. So it would be in the best of your interest interests, oh my son, to develop a link with your maker in such a way that the day you die, not only will people say we've lost a great man, but you're in the best possible place because you developed such a good link with the one you're going to return to. This is why when we prostrate to the ground, we say, oh my maker who is in charge of me, oh you are the highest, I am the lowest, you made me, I owe this to you, that my head goes on the ground to you and nobody else. That means, la tushrik billah, don't associate partners with Allah. It, it's not allowed to bow down or should I say to prostrate in worship to anyone besides he who made you. Not even a prophet, not even a saint, not a human being, not a tree and not an animal. He who made you, you put your head down. Wow, this is what he's telling his son. But the beauty is how he is saying it. He says, oh my son, you know that if you do that, it is the biggest, biggest bad deed you could ever do. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. It is oppressing yourself you wronging your own self you have a mind and a brain just think for a moment what should i be doing let me worship my maker and my maker alone he made me and he brought me into this world i have to live just for approximately 70 years on average if you're lucky and then i need to go and when I go, I'm going to go for longer than I ever lived. Take a look at those who died 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. Where are they? They've been dead for longer than they were alive. The same will happen to us. So we need to think about this. And this is why Luqman says, hey, to his son, oh, my beloved son, think about this. Look at it. Don't ever associate partners with your maker. Develop a link with him and him alone. Amazing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Luqman tells his son, you now have a very good link with your maker. How did he make you? He chose parents for you. He chose parents. What race they belong to, what nationality they are, what size they were, what financial standing they were. You had no choice in that regard. Nothing. He chose. So therefore, respect your parents. No matter who they are, where they are, what financial standing they have, you respect them. You be kind to them. You reach out to them. Speak to them with respect. Listen to them and obey their instructions as far as possible. There is only one exception. If they are to ask you to do something bad or wrong, then you excuse yourself kindly and you keep on being good to them in other ways. Wow. Subhanallah. This is what the surah says. Look at the power. The second point of Luqman. He says... He doesn't even say, be kind to me, I'm your father. It, he could have said that. Oh my son, I'm a wise man. Be kind to me, I'm your father. And watch your mother as well. Be kind to her, she's your mother. Be careful how you treat her. No, he didn't say that. Allahu Akbar. He makes mention of how Allah has enjoined, how your maker has asked you to, in, to be kind to your parents. Amazing. This is what he says. He makes mention of it in such a beautiful way. Yeah, your maker has asked you to be kind to your parents. Wow. Amazing. And then he says, be so kind to them, good to them, the way you speak to them. I pause for a moment. There are two things involved. Children who are here. I am also a child. My parents, alhamdulillah, are alive. May Allah grant them goodness. Remember one thing. How you speak to your parents is extremely important. You need to be kind 
You need to understand you might think you're a big deal and a huge strong teenager who's got muscle and who really is stronger than your own father and your mother. And sometimes you feel I can beat up dad because you know what? He doesn't even have the muscle. But remember one thing, it is your test, how you talk to them. They may tell you things that you don't agree with. Think about it. If they are correct, then change your mind. And if they are wrong, respectfully disagree. And remember that it is a test for you. But the second point, my beloved parents, live with your children in such a beautiful way, live with your children in such a beautiful way that they respect you to that degree. Sometimes we lead such a cheap life as parents that our children have no time for us. Sorry, there's a small announcement. There is a vehicle that perhaps needs yeah. movement. I think that's normally the announcement. Can I have the number? Yeah, actually, the vehicle SDW9955S, mashallah. The value of your car has just shot up by 100,000 Singapore dollars. So inshallah, if you stand up, at least we can offer you something. Uh, my brothers and sisters, this is just a mistake. It's a human error. Uh, I think if you would be kind enough, SDW9955S, if you can please urgently as an act of worship, get up and just move your car and we will wait for you. Inshallah. In fact, we're recording this. You can hear it inshallah later on. My brothers and sisters, there's a way of saying things. I could have got up here and shouted the brother and said, you don't have any shame. But you know what? It could have been my car. Uh, I don't really think so, but I don't think I would have done that. But sometimes in your desperation to listen to something good, you do something bad. It happens on a Friday. I don't know if you noticed. We want to get to the tadkirah and to listen to the message and so powerfully and we are late. Why are you late? Why are you late? Come early. Didn't you hear that? And then park your car in a way that, subhanAllah, you don't disturb people. Because I'm going there, say, oh, oh Allah, I'm asking Allah on a Friday, oh Allah, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And someone out there saying, whoever this is, curse them, curse them. So there are two du'as which are fighting each other. One wonders who will win. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So, mashallah, that's the number plate and that's the vehicle. I'm sure it's moved by now, you know. Uh, alhamdulillah. Let's carry on with what we were saying. So Luqman tells his, his son in a beautiful way, and I was saying that there are two things. One is, we should respect our parents and we should live a life if we are parents in a way that our children automatically respect us. Some of us do not respect ourselves. You know, we go and do wrong things and we embarrass ourselves. We show our bad habits to our children. What an insult. You know, smoking is a terrible habit. But I tell you, respect to those who do not like to actually show a bad habit to their children, knowing that I don't want my child to think that this thing is okay. And I'm so happy to hear that in Singapore, you dare try to smoke in public. Wow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. I wish that law was everywhere. You know, I wish it was even in the house, that if you want to smoke, you've got to go into such a small room, just you and the cigarette. Did you know? I think it would eradicate the matter. So, my brothers and sisters, that is the point. You want parenting, you need to live as a decent parent. People complain, you know, my, my daughter wants to marry a guy from Czechoslovakia. And she just met him on the net. And I don't know, Imam, come and help me. Tell her that it's haram. Okay, so we are only there to show stick. Is that what it is? And this is why little children, whenever the child says something bad, they used to say, hey, you better do it, otherwise I'll tell the Imam. I don't know if it happens in this country as well. Poor Imam, such a softy, he's hardly even paid. He can't even drive a Toyota. And you look at him and you're looking at him and say, yeah, that's the Imam. And you see a man with a beard and the child says, uh, you know. You have to change that. Come on, it's your fault. Why did you not engage in the life of your child from the beginning? Suddenly when they want to get married, you want to instruct them what to do. Where were your instructions all along? Why didn't you instruct your child from the beginning and make them your best friend? The minute they found, they said, you know what, dad, I can meet a guy online. And they just, that happened half an hour ago. It's easier to guide them at that time than three years later after she had two abortions, she tells you, dad, I want to marry a guy. May Allah safeguard us. This is happening on a global level. Believe me, this is going on. But we sometimes refuse to acknowledge the reality on the ground. And this is where we fail. So my brothers and sisters, it's important to develop such a beautiful relation and live in a way that people have a friendship with you who are your own family members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us have a big heart. Also the devil comes in sometimes. For one small misunderstanding you've had, you stop talking to your parents and your brothers and so on. Why? Why is this? Why do we have to have a misunderstanding make us 
cut off a relation that Allah has started. And this is why the hadith says, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِ Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, a maintainer of good relations is not the one who has a tit-for-tat relation. You give me a gift, I give you a gift. You give me a prize, I give you a prize. You call me to your house, I call you to mine. But he says, a true maintainer of family ties is he or she who goes out to mend a relation that is broken. Then you are talking business. How many of us are ready to do that with our own brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, in-laws, whoever else it is? Put yourself down and just apologize sometimes. I have apologized more than a hundred times when I know I'm not wrong. Look, I'm sorry. I really, really am sorry. Why? Because it brought about happiness within me. People tell me, you're crazy. Why do you keep on apologizing? I say, because I need the happiness. I need the happiness. I need the contentment. I don't want to have stress in my life. If it's going to cost me, I am sorry. Let me say it. It's like a payment. And I, in reality, I wasn't wrong. Allahu Akbar. But we sorted the matter. But this only requires a person who knows what sickness is all about and who knows the value of contentment sometimes to be happy. You have to forgive. You have to. Without forgiving people, sometimes you will lose sleep. You will lose contentment. Have a big heart. Just say, look, no problem. I forgive them. Maybe you don't want to deal with them so much in the future. But the bare minimums, at least, salamu alaikum, peace be upon you. How are you? That word, assalamu alaikum, sometimes people say that this is my enemy. I don't want to greet him. The reality is maybe that prayer of peace might just be amened by the angels in a way that they actually become peace-loving people who are so peaceful that you enjoy their company. Company, but you refuse to greet them. So you refuse to pray for them. Because in Islam, the greeting is actually a prayer. So we, we greet you with a beautiful prayer. May peace be upon you. And you say, and may peace be upon you too. And the blessings and the mercy of the Almighty. What a beautiful greeting. May Allah make it more prevalent, inshallah, amongst us. And may we mean it when we say it. Because there are a lot of people who greet you. Salam alaikum. Have you seen the beautiful smile? And as you move back, Straight on Twitter, I saw this idiot today. A'udhu billah. What is it? But you greeted me with such a broad smile that I even started sweating. Subhanallah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, take a look at Luqman. What else did he say? He says, Ya bunayya inna in takumith qala habbatin min khardal he says, Oh my son, you should know that even if it is a mustard seed's worth or a mustard seed weight of a deed or an item that is within a rock or anywhere in the heavens and the earth, the Almighty will bring it forth. He knows about it. You cannot hide from him. So he's actually telling him something and he's mentioning two points about it. He says your deed, no matter how, how big or small it is, size-wise, and no matter where it is done, as in place-wise, the Almighty knows about it and he will bring it to the book. So you cannot hide from him. Now today, if I wanted to do a bad deed, I look behind me and see, anyone watching? No one watching. Then perhaps I might want to do something. You know, people engage in pornography, they want to watch it and they get a kick out of it, not realizing that it messes your brain. It actually psychologically retards you in a very big way. It actually makes you a person who becomes abnormal. According to studies, today I was reading a, a study on pornography and it was explaining how a person actually loses interest in the opposite sex because of their involvement in pornography and they become people who think quite differently and when they look at others they think that a lot of others might be engaged in the same thing not realizing that no it's you and your sickness so remember that is something bad i've just mentioned it thumbs up because it's a problem in societies and communities and so the issue is when people do these things they do them in private but if i were to tell you that you know what watch out for wikileaks they're watching you you know what? Be careful of NSA. They're watching you. They know every movement of yours. What happens? Say, hey, I better watch out. But what about your maker? Come on, man. He's been watching you all along. And the beauty with him is, if you've done something wrong, you just got to say, I'm sorry, I regret, I won't do it again, forgive me. And it's wiped out, completely deleted. Not stacked up in the record somewhere in the world. No. 
It's gone totally deleted. So Luqman is telling his child that my son, you do whatever you are doing. Remember that no matter how small the deed is and no matter where you've done it, the Almighty has brought it to book, will bring it to book, knows about it and is in absolute control of you at all times. So I need to know this. If, I, if the Almighty wants right now, He can stop my heart from beating and I'm gone. And what will happen? Well, then I go to face him and answer for all my deeds. And I have hope because I know he is merciful and he is forgiving. And he is just and he is kind. He is the all kind. He is the one who absolutely has mercy on all of his creatures. So I have that hope in me. But I also have a warning where he has said, hey, that doesn't mean you just need to carry on doing things and say he's merciful. You know, someone commits adultery once, they ask Allah's forgiveness. Twice, they ask Allah's forgiveness. Forgiven. They, a third time, they ask Allah's forgiveness. They're forgiven three times. And, and they, they will continue to be forgiven. But when they say, I'm going to commit the sin because I know that the Almighty is merciful and I know that after I commit it, He will still forgive me. Well, then you're playing a dangerous game. You're playing a very dangerous game. Your father, for example, or your mother as a parent might know that you're a person who uh, has done something wrong. They might say, look, don't worry. You st stole the cookies? No problem. You can eat them. I bake them. That's what mom will say. No, no, no need to steal. But next time you want to take all of them. So again, you do it behind her back. She says, no problem. It's okay. Tell me I'll make them for you next time. I'm your mother. The third time you do the same thing, she says, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's wrong with you? Don't you see the tone changing? And after you do it so many times, there's a problem. You're treading a dangerous path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. So the point being raised is develop a link with your maker, develop a link with your parents, and remember whatever you do or say, always there is Allah who is watchful. And if you are embarrassed about something you've done in your past, quickly delete it and format your hard drive by saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. I admit my sin. I regret it and I won't do it again. Four conditions wiped out. In Islam, there is a beautiful teaching and that is to confess your sin only to your maker. Wow. Imagine if you had to confess your sin to people. May Allah protect us. No, Islam says don't ever do that. That person you might be confessing to may be more deeply involved in sin than you and you don't even know. I come across very religious perhaps. Only Allah knows what I am swimming in. I try. And subhanallah, I cannot claim to be a perfect human being, not at all. We believe in Islam, none of us are perfect. Kullu bani Adam khatta. We are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all of the children of Adam make mistakes, they, are, they make error. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who constantly repent. Mark the word constantly. Constantly repent on a daily basis, every day. I say, oh Allah, forgive me, grant me ease, grant me goodness and so on. So remember this, you can never hide from the Almighty. Quickly, my son, make amends. If you have faulted, ask the Almighty's forgiveness. You're not going to be able to run away from Him. Not be able to run away from the Almighty. So ask Him for forgiveness. And if you really are sincere, Allah says, إِلَّا مَن تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَّحِيمًا You know, people who've committed so many various sins, the Almighty says, those who repent sincerely and do good deeds after that, we will reward them in such a big way that we will take the bad deeds they did and convert them into good deeds on the right side of the scale and let them enter into paradise with so many good deeds that were formerly bad. But because they repented and did good deeds after that, we even converted that for them. Who can be more merciful than the Almighty? Like I always say, imagine you owe someone $10,000. And then you say, you know, I'm very, very sorry. You know, I really can't make it and I won't ever do this again. And they said, you know what? I forgive the 10,000 and here's another 10. Take it and go. Wow. Is there anyone like that in Singapore? Inshallah, maybe we can say it quickly. Anyone want these riba free loans? Inshallah. It's hard to find someone like that. But the Almighty says, I will do that for you. I double, triple. In fact, the Almighty tells us, do you know whatever you have is actually from me. When you came to the world, you came without anything. And when you leave, you will leave without.
without anything. The only thing that will actually make you or break you, your deeds. Whatever we gave you in between birth and death, you need to convert it into good deeds and take it away. That's all. Because when you leave, you're going to go there just like you were born without anything. Nobody takes a list of things that they've achieved with them into the grave to say, you know what? Here's all my money. Here's everything. Here's all my bank cards. Here's whatever. No, you could have the most in the world. The winner is he or she who has converted that money into a good deed by spending it in a charitable cause, reaching out to others, doing good deeds, subhanallah, that will help you the day you are gone, as we've spoken. So Luqman tells his son, Oh my son, Ya Bunay, remember, you will not be able to hide from your maker, but I want to tell you something else, my son. Ya Bunayya aqimi salata wa amur bil ma'roofi wa anhaanil munkari wa asbir ala ma asabak. Four things mentioned together. If we, if we categorize them, three categories of items. He says, oh my beloved son, my beloved son, observe your prayer punctually. Pray to the Almighty, your maker, punctually. Remember on a daily basis, you owe him that prayer. Remember he's given you the life, turn to him in prayer. Put your head down on the ground for him five times a day. Put your head down on the ground for the one who made you. You have problems, he's the owner of the solution. You need to have a link with him. You have poverty, he, he is the owner of all wealth. You need to have a link with him. You know, if we, I'm looking for a job and I've heard that it's impossible to get a job at this big company, you know. And next thing I enter for Salat Jum'ah or I walk into a mall and someone tells me, hey, this is a CEO of that company. CEO of which company? The company I've been looking for a job for that people have been telling me it's impossible to attain and get. The CEO is sitting right next to me. I hope we don't start nudging him because then he won't give you the job. But at the end of the day, what we will do, seize the opportunity. Morning, sir. How are you? Whatever. Make a link with him. Smile at him. Perhaps if you have a card, perhaps if you have a small resume, or you might have a statement, a smile, and you might have something to say, you know, I, I really, I have qualifications. I'd love to work in the company and so on. Say something so that you know that tomorrow when you actually apply for the job, it will be a feather in the cap. You met the boss. Now, do you know who owns this dunya and the akhirah, the world and the next, this life and the next? The owner of it is the giver of it in the first place. Whoever brought me into this world, I call him the worshipped one, which translates in the Arabic language as Allah. We will talk about it inshallah tomorrow perhaps. But if you take a look at Allah, my maker, or the Lord who made me an entire creation, if you take a look, he made me so I owe him my existence. But he's made it so interesting that he's told me, you live in this world for 70 years and I want you to enjoy within limits. So you will have a woman or a person of the opposite sex, but you'll be married to them. Just do it properly. You will have wealth, but don't steal it. Don't pinch it. Don't deceive others to get it. Do not con. Do not usurp. Do it properly. Work hard to get it. It will be better for you. You will have your own in terms of goodness, but we will test you time and again. This is why every one of us who are here today, mashallah, I see, I can't even see the end of this crowd, subhanallah. But every one of us has, has needs and we have issues, difficulties and problems. Every one of us, myself included. Different magnitudes. Why did the Almighty keep it that way? Because he wants us to turn to him, to ask him, to understand and realize this is not the eternal life. This is just a test phase. Every year I am tested once or twice or more. And every year things happen and sometimes they are prolonged and they last so long. I need to live in such a way that I pass my test. And I, at least when I get to the hereafter, which will be eternal, I will actually be able to lead a much happier life, which is eternal and it will be everlasting, beautiful. One day there was a man who told me when I spoke about how we've, people have died longer than they've lived. And I said that that is a sign that the next life is eternal. It's a sign. And he came back and he says, I never ever thought of it that way. Because I always used to think for these 60, 70 years, I must do the best I can so that I can leave behind properties and everything for my children. And I said, no, you must leave behind as much as you can for your children. But remember, it's going to be left behind. Take with you what you can. He says, what can I take? You can take your deeds. That's all. Nothing else comes with you. Deeds. D-double-E-D-S. That's what comes with you. 
So make the most of it. We all worried about leaving our children wealthy, but where will we be when they will be enjoying that wealth or fighting over it? Did you prepare for that day? Well, that's what Luqman tells his son. Develop your link with your maker by praying. Aqim is salah. Establish the prayer. Brothers and sisters, it is an insult not to be establishing prayer. Make an intention today, here and now. I will be praying five times a day and I will make sure that I fulfill this duty unto my maker. What has he not given you? We always look at that which sometimes we are going through in terms of negativity and forget so much of positive that he has granted us. You know, I came to this beautiful country and I did not know that the humidity is 150%, mashallah. But at the same time, I, was, I came prepared. Didn't you see me? I came prepared and I pulled out all the tissues knowing, hey, it's one thing that might be slightly negative, but believe me, it's a place on earth that really works. Thank Allah, it works. One thing is sweat. It's okay, we all sweat. They say you must sweat to earn in Malay. Sorry, in this part of the world, even while I'm standing, I'll still be sweating. Say, I did sweat for my work. What were you doing? I was sweating. <laughs> so here, sweat does not necessarily mean working hard. It could mean standing, doing nothing, sweating. Be careful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us hard working, my brothers and sisters. Luqman says, Oh my son, establish prayer. Aqim is salah. Wa'mur bil ma'roof, wanha anil munkar. My son, Encourage people to do good and help them to stay away from bad by prohibiting it. So this is why be happy when someone tells you, my brother, you're supposed to be doing this. Today I spoke about prayer, developing your link with Allah. And subhanAllah, you need to be happy. If you're weak in your heart, say, no, make me strong, my maker. I must pray. See how your life will change. Do you know that when you add that religiousness or spirituality into your life, you actually adding a huge flavor that makes you so happy and content nobody can describe it for you you have to feel it and go through it that's a love so my brothers and sisters it's amazing Luqman is telling his son remind people to do good keep on reminding them no matter what they think of you today I tweeted about a true friend and I said the true friend is he or she who tells you what is right who advises you and who corrects you even when it is bitter to digest they still correct you you know what I think you're wrong here. Look, you're my best friend, but please don't do this. I really believe what you're doing is wrong. Okay, there's a way of talking. You know, there is a way of coming across. Some people say, very bad, ugly. You know, you're rotten. How could you do this? You know, you're such a monster. Hey, 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 hey. relax, relax. If I'm a monster, guess what? You look just like me. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Huh? So you need to be careful. You know, they call each other bad names and so on. Wait, there's a way of correcting people. Correct them in such a way that they feel good. They feel like they want to correct themselves. You know, you prove to your child why what you are saying is bad is actually bad. And this goes back to the parenting. Many of us just instruct our child, you will not go there. Did you hear that? Say it again. They stand up. Say it. I will not go there. Okay, right. You heard that? Now sit down. And in the heart, the child says, as soon as my father looks the other way, I'm gone. I'm going there. Why? You didn't talk to them. You didn't engage. You did not communicate. All you did was instruct. Your instruction might be right, but convince your child or convince your friend or someone else. Why is it that you said what you did? You said, you know what? If you go there, there is a problem. There are loose wires that are hanging there. 240 volts. So many people have died there. Dad, I don't want to go. I really don't want to go. Say, look, if you want to go, it's up to you. No, 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 I don't want to go. Because you've convinced the child. It's over. Same applies when we're talking to one another. We want to help. We want to correct. There's a way of doing things. We all find ourselves sometimes with a bit of, you know, a temper. And we say things that we could improve on. Myself included. Sometimes I've said things maybe that come across a little bit harsh. And then you come and you think again. And you say, no, I can word this much better. That's what is being spoken about. So apply wisdom. Just like Luqman applied wisdom when it comes to imparting the knowledge you have. Sometimes you have a lot of knowledge, but you don't have wisdom yet. You know, you might, what you said is right, but the way you said it has made people even worse than what they were. So we ask the Almighty to help us. So these are the two important factors. Enjoining good and prohibiting evil. Something is bad, you need to say, look, this is wrong. This is bad. This is unacceptable and so on. So we ask the Almighty to help us Choose the best path to do this. The bare minimum, sometimes you can't do something, you cannot do something about certain things because you're not involved directly or you don't have the authority and so on. So the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of his, he says clearly that 
if in that case, at least you feel in your heart that this thing is bad. I felt it in my heart to say, you know what? What's happening is actually wrong. It's bad. And in that case, I would at least save myself. Because if you cannot save others, the bare minimum is save yourself. Subhanallah. Save yourself to start with. Today I was with uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah, mashallah, Allah grant him goodness. And we were talking about something and he raised such an interesting point that I want to share with you. I'm sure many of us have flown on an aircraft. Every time you fly, there is an announcement that is made. The announcement of if there is loss of cabin pressure, the masks will appear or they will drop down from you know, the top. When that happens, they always show you a little child. And they say, if you have a child with you, first put your own mask. You heard that? Wow, I heard this today again. And I said, amazing. So then help the child. Because you might suffocate and you might harm yourself while you're trying to save someone else. You could save both. But first do it yourself and then go to the other. The same applies to us in life at large. Sometimes we want to correct our children. We have the same mistake in us. Will it help? It won't help. Correct yourself and then help your child. Your child will learn automatically. They'll see sometimes you are helping yourself. When you look at the child, you might see the child already has the mask on. Why? They just watched what you did and followed the same. Amazing. So this is why remember to lead by example. And the, 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 the third point, or if we categorized it, we did it in three, and if we mentioned them separately, they were four. He, the Luqman tells his son, ala ma asabak. Be very patient and endure that which reached you, which you could do nothing about. Endure it. So someone passed away. There has to be someone who will pass away. That's the Almighty's test. Allah tells us in the Quran that I will definitely test every one of you with not only the fact that you're going to die, no, but the death of someone close to you whilst you are still alive. Someone close to you has to die. If they haven't yet died, they are going to. Or you might die before them, so it's a test for them. Because the Almighty wants to test you to say, will you bear patience upon what we have tested you with? I had no role to play. I could only pray to the Almighty. I took her to the doctor or I took him to the doctor and I tried my best medically and we, we struggled and so on, but still he passed away or she passed away. Well, you, you might cry tears because it's normal. That's mercy. But you do not say, why did you do this to me, Almighty? Or Allah, why did you do this to me? No, there was one brother who told me, Allah is so cruel. I'm changing my religion because why did my uncle die? I said, well, there are people of the faith you are thinking to go to that, that have uncles who also die. What happened to them? You understand? So it's, it's silly. You need to bear patience upon what the Almighty has tested you with. Your tests are unique. They are tailor-made. Your exam questions are different from the others. You might have a few people who go through something similar. And you might achieve comfort by listening to their answers in their examinations, meaning how they coped. But yours will be specifically tailor-made for you and mine for me. May the Almighty make our tests easy and may He make us pass them. And all those who've been tested, may the Almighty make it easy for you and may your tests be easy. Amen. So Luqman says, my son, don't think life is just going to be, you know, a, a, a garden of roses. No, life is not just going to be so smooth. You might have the best vehicle on earth. But you might have a blowout and a puncture and then you're embarrassed. You still got to stop on the side of the road. Then what happens? You still have to repair. You still have to repair. There is a certain make of a certain vehicle. They used to say it is so highly priced that when something goes wrong, they have to cover the vehicle to repair the damage. So no one knows which vehicle is actually damaged. I won't even say what vehicle it is. Just now they sue me. Subhanallah. You know? So the, re the, the reason I make mention of this is because... Remember, when something happens to you, it will, no matter how powerful, how big, how wealthy, how good looking, how whatever educated you think you are, uneducated, no matter who, what, where, when, why and how, something will happen which will be your test. You need to endure. There's nothing besides endurance and prayer and asking the Almighty's help that will be able to help you. Certain things. So Luqman is telling his son, look, just be careful, you know, make sure that you understand the tests and the plans of the Almighty. That is something beautiful. Then let's continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mentioning what Luqman has said, the wise. Allah says, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا 
Don't turn your cheek away from people in an arrogant fashion. You know how sometimes people turn their cheeks away from you? I was walking into here a few moments ago. And believe me, I, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Believe me, even if I don't know you, there is a link between us. And I'd like to hope it's genuine. As I'm walking in, there are obviously thousands of people here. It's impossible for me to greet and shake everybody's hand and so on. And you know, people tell you, you, you know what, can I please take a photo with you? And it's impossible to actually satisfy everyone. And I felt, you know, the brothers, they want to take care of me. So they created a little bit of a ring as I was walking in and asked them what I told them. I said, my brothers, you know what, I'm not a politician. Let's break this ring. Let's walk through. Let's walk through, you know. And I know that they have a concern that people out of their happiness and excitement might want to but I'd like to believe that, you know, people are civilized. Civil Singapore is a country with a difference. Believe me, it is, mashallah. Thank Allah for that. And contribute to your country. Many of us sometimes think, I'm a Muslim. Why should I contribute to the country? Well, you are part and parcel of the system here as well. You need to contribute to your country. Be one of the best of citizens. People should look at you and say, that you know what? These people are top taxpayers. They've contributed to the country. They are really people who are worth having in our own country and they would be happy to see you. Wow, that is some big achievement. But sadly, sometimes people think otherwise. And this is why we're here to correct ourselves. Look at how beautiful the system is. It works. You have a fine... Pay it so that you don't engage in that again. Don't just evade it. You know, in my part of the world, and I must say this because it's on a lighter note, but it is a problem. You have a fine, and then you find someone who can squash it for you. You know what that means? That is a contact I have. Don't worry, collect all the fines, give them to me. Then they tell you, okay, I give it to someone. What happened to those fines? They're squashed. Squashed? What do you mean? I think in Singapore you wouldn't even know what that meant. I hope you don't. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and bless us all across the globe. I mean. So my brothers and sisters, we need to know that sometimes, you know, people do certain things we don't understand. I was giving you my own example. And as I'm walking, I try to greet a few people here and there. It's impossible. But don't turn your cheek away from people in arrogance. Who do you think you are? Ask yourself the question. Who am I? And the truth is, who am I? I'm just a human being like everybody else. This is what Luqman is telling his son. That, oh my son, to watch out how you treat people. Be careful, talk to them with respect. Remember that your attitude towards them. This part of the verse is addressing attitude towards people. Needs to be upright and correct. You want to have a positive impact on people. Well, have a good attitude. If you take a look at the big, big companies where the CEO intermingles and mixes with those who work for him or under him because he knows he will achieve better results if he has a good relation with those who work under his authority but if he has no relation whatsoever it's somehow very boring to go to work and it's somehow very boring because my little needs and my problems nobody takes care of them today we have a whole department which takes care of the emotional problems of those who work under that particular company or in the company because they know there is a childbirth happening, there's going to be some form of guidance counseling that's needed. There is a death that took place, something will happen. A robbery took place in your home, sometimes in our workplace people have been robbed, we don't even know, but we work with them, we sit with them almost half the day, or more than half of the day. We don't even know, why? Because we couldn't be bothered, we're leading our own singular life. Well Allah says, you better interact with people and touch their lives in a positive way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in a way that our lives are also touched positively. Here Luqman tells his son, don't turn your cheek away arrogantly from people. لا تصعر خدك للناس And watch how you walk. ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا You know that walk is so important, it's hard because sometimes you're walking, okay? Now I know I've given you the example of the parrot. I'm sure a lot of you know the story, right? The parrot. You want to hear it again? It's been years since I've said it. It's been years. It's about arrogance and how badly the people behave sometimes. And you know, arrogance gets you nowhere. Be humble no matter who you are. You can be the top person on the globe or you can be a person who owns or who has. So what? Be humble. Watch how you walk. You don't have to walk inside. You know, who am I? I'm a big man. Wallahi, I, we've seen this happening. And this is strange because the look in your eye can sometimes tell that you're a good person. People can actually see. You know, they can see the eye. It's not always accurate, but sometimes they can say, look, this person is actually genuine. They care for me. They actually want to help me. So we were talking of the parrot. There was a parrot that could speak and it did not like arrogant people. So there was a woman who walked past that pet shop and the parrot was 
you know, shown outside as one of the best things we own at the pet shop. So as the woman walks, you know, that she had court shoes. You know what court shoes are? Those high heel shoes, you know, and, and they make a sound, court, 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 I think as you walk, you know. So basically, as she's walking, what happened? The parrot says, hey you, hey you. Oh, did I just hear the parrot call me? And as this person looks, the parrot says, you're ugly. Oh, that was very bad, so embarrassing. I need to sue this parrot. Anyway, let's forgive him for today. Carry on. Next day, same thing. Hey you, hey you. But I didn't change my walk. The way I walked was still the same. So the parrot picks it up. Hey you, you're ugly. <gasps> that was very nasty. That was really bad. Okay, I'm going to allow this parrot one more time. Then if it happens again tomorrow, I am definitely going to do something about this. And guess what? The third day, my walk did not change. I still walk the same arrogant way. Hey, down the aisle, boasting with all my friends and everything. Hey, hey you, hey you. <gasps> You're ugly. Ooh, that was, that was the last straw. It's over. So now what this person does, she goes in, tells the shop owner, fine, I want to sue you because of this parrot. What? Yes, you're going to be paying me X amount of defamation and embarrassment and whatever's been happening on the street, you don't even know and so on. Okay, do me a favor, ma'am. I will make sure this never repeats itself. Okay, fine. Call the parrot in. The parrot was called in. Listen, parrot, see this woman? Don't ever say you're ugly to this woman. So the parrot now cannot explain that, you know, but she's so arrogant the way she walks past like she owns the whole world and she looks at everyone as though she's the biggest thing. All I try to do is to chop her down a little bit, you know, but the parrot cannot explain. So the parrot just says, okay, okay, no more saying you're ugly. Okay, no more. Agreed? Agreed. If you do, it's over. Okay, no more. So the next day the woman calls all her friends, you know the problem is solved, come and see, let's see. And she has the most of arrogance, walking with the biggest of sounds and the poor parrot is busy shivering there, wondering what's going to happen to me. And the woman passes and the parrot doesn't say anything. Oh. And after a while she's so arrogant so she looks back, huh? the parrot says, hey you, hey you, <gasps> what? You know, <laughs> Allah safeguard us. So I didn't say you, I, you know what happened, you know what I mean, you know why I said hey you, don't you? You better change your ways. So the moral of that story is, it's been a long time since I've said this, I think it's been a few years, subhanAllah. But the moral of the story is arrogance, take it out of your life. Because even the plants and vegetation will not be on your side, believe me. Even the animals will not be on your side. This arrogance doesn't help. You know those who have little pets at home, a little kitten and so on. Sometimes you have these animals, they don't like those who are hard and harsh, they can sense it. And sometimes, you know, if you want, you have to, you stroke a little kitten in order to try and convince it to come through. Otherwise you come forth and it's gone, runs away. People have different types of pets. Sometimes you have a bird that could fly away, but it stays with you because it knows that you care for it. But the minute you show a bit of harshness and arrogance and so on, it's gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He make things easy for us. So be careful how you walk and don't be arrogant. This is the advice of Luqman, the wise. Then he says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ وَقُصِدْ فِي مَشِيكٍ وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكِ Walk moderately on earth. So you neither walk too fast, nor are you slow, nor do you stamp your feet, nor are you tiptoeing, meaning according to the occasion and whatever it requires, you are walking accordingly. You have a good brisk walk, you stand up firm. He's teaching his son how to walk, how to walk. How many of us have taught our children how to walk? And then he says, and lower your voice. You don't need to scream. You know, I remember a few years ago, nowadays we are so fortunate, technology, technology has actually moved in leaps and bounds. There was a time, not a long time ago, when if you wanted to call another country, you had to phone the exchange and book a call, give them the number and they would tell you, we'll call you back at this time. I don't know if you recall those days. And then you find I'm talking to someone in the UK and I'm here in Singapore. So the exchange calls you and says, is this your name? This is your number? Yes. Okay, we, are, we have put your call through to this number in the UK. Thank you very much. Now you hold. Then you hear someone from there saying, hello. And then you say, hey, hello, how are you? Hello, can you hear me? 
Because you're busy thinking, hey, they're in the UK, man. Not realizing that even if you just said, hello, they would hear you. Subhanallah. So this is why there was a time when that used to happen. And up to today, I'm so sorry, I don't want to offend the older people, but it's technology that has changed. It's made us a little bit calmer. But sometimes you see an old person, he, when he's talking on the phone, I hope it doesn't happen to us here. You know, you know what I do? Whenever I say something of this nature, I quickly protect myself by saying it doesn't happen in this country. So let me say it doesn't happen in Singapore. But anyway, elsewhere. So you, you find them speaking so loudly and you say, calm down. He says, but they're far away. But hang on, they can hear you, man. Come on. So, so Luqman is telling his son, well, you know when you speak to people, watch your volume. Volume also is very important. You don't need to scream and shout because sometimes I know I visited a country without taking names. And the people would say, hello, how are you? As though they are fighting each other. And he says, and I'm like, what happened? He says, I was just asking him how he was. He says, what did he say? He says, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> wow. Now come on. So we need to be a bit civilized. We're being taught, learn how to speak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And the ending of these verses, he says, Inna ankar al aswati la sawtul hamir. Indeed, the most detested of all sounds is the sound of a braying donkey. You know, when you hear a donkey, you don't know what it said and you can't even hear it, and you just know it's a big sound, and it's actually making so much of uh, noise. Sometimes when you speak so loudly, people don't know what you've said. Calm down, more people will listen to you. Speak softly, say something, you know, on their level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. I hope we've learned something from Luqman the wise. There are so many other sayings and quotations of his that are found in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and various other narrations. And th this evening I actually got a lot of his quotations and uh, compiled them in, in, in a certain form. And I hope and pray that starting from this, I will inshallah at some stage go through a lot of his sayings and try and extract benefit from it because it's something really, really wise. This evening, however, we concentrated on what he told his son with the idea of us also imparting to our own children as good parents that which will be beneficial. I hope we've benefited. I've spoken for a solid hour and one minute and five seconds. The one minute and five seconds was for this vehicle, do you remember? So don't blame, inshallah. Jazakumullah khaira. Kullu ma tisma'un wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.